The movie opens up in the year 1934 in Connecticut, where former U.S. President John F. Kennedy is still in his teenage years. He must have gotten all the babes. One day, while at school, his math teacher calls him to his office. John obliges, and as soon as he closes the door, the teacher pulls a gun on him, trying to kill him. Luckily, an unnamed man barges in through the door and shoots the teacher dead. JFK is traumatized by what just happened. Following this, we are taken to the year 2018 to present-day Earth. Inside a basement, two Two men exit a strange device and slowly bring out an unconscious John F. Kennedy. Lo and behold, it is revealed that the men are time travelers and that the device is a time machine. One of the men, Wyatt, approaches his awestruck colleagues and explains that the Rittenhouse tried to assassinate JFK. That's why he and his colleague had to bring him here. Here, we get to know that the Rittenhouse is a mysterious organization. Did this movie come out before Kyle Rittenhouse? Oh my god, I think it did. Here, we get to know that the Rittenhouse is a mysterious organization whose sole purpose is to change the course of history in a negative way. They do this with the help of their time-traveling assassins, and this time, a 17-year-old JFK was their target. The plan was to finish him off before he could become the president and change America for the better. On the other hand, Wyatt and his associates are part of the Lifeboat Team, an organization whose job is pretty much just to stop the evil Rittenhouse. Meanwhile, Wyatt promises to his worried colleagues that he will return JFK back in his time as soon as the danger is averted. Until then, he will be staying in the basement. After a while, JFK finally regains consciousness and starts bombarding everyone with questions. He inquires about the location and why his math teacher tried to kill him. Why in the world did that man try to kill me? Wyatt makes up a story that they are private security hired by his dad, but JFK starts panicking even more. Fortunately, Lifeboat Team has a history teacher named Lucy, and she uses her knowledge of JFK's family, like his father's name and home address, to calm him down. She also reassures him that he'll meet his father very soon, and until that time, he should just rest. Following this, the Lifeboat Team leaves the room and closes the door so that JFK can have some alone time. Lucy goes to the kitchen to prepare some food for him, but when she returns after 10 minutes, JFK is nowhere to be seen. Turns out the teenager got scared and escaped through a small tunnel in the basement. Wyatt and the others scan the whole area and even contact the security guard outside, but find no traces of the teenager. Now they are faced with a challenging task. If they don't find JFK quickly, the Rittenhouse will probably get to him first and kill him. This will result in JFK never becoming the president, which in turn will cause a series of chain events. The Peace Corps will cease to exist. The Civil Rights Rights Act will never happen, the immigration reform will be abolished, and most importantly, several countries will be at America's neck. Who knows, the world may turn into a war zone run by lunatics. Don't worry, that's going to happen anyway. So, Wyatt, Lucy, and another colleague decide to go after him. Elsewhere, JFK reaches a nearby department store and immediately gets shocked to witness the technological advancements like LED television, ATM machine, CCTV camera, BDSM entertainment, and so on. He then heads to the cashier and asks for a pay phone, but gets told that those things are only found in museums. Anxious, JFK reveals that he has been kidnapped, and hearing this, the cashier finally takes the situation seriously and brings out his smartphone. But, as expected, JFK has no idea how to use it. Just then, he finds a magazine on the counter, which has the year 2018 written on it. JFK nervously asks the cashier today's date, and when the latter replies April 5th, 2018, his mind is blown. Even more blown than it was in 63. As he tries to get a hold of the situation, cars keep pulling up at the store, and this makes him more and more anxious. He believes that the kidnappers from earlier will find him any second and take him back to the basement. So, when a group of teenagers get ready to depart, he requests a lift. One of them named Kelly mentions that they're going to Palo Alto, and this shocks JFK even more as he was kidnapped thousands of miles away in Connecticut. Nonetheless, he decides to join the group, as getting lost is better than getting apprehended. Back at the basement, some tech guys are trying to locate the teenager through CCTV footage. One of them fears that JFK may already have been found and killed by the Rittenhouse. However, his friend disagrees. She comes up with a theory that since they all know who JFK is, he probably returned back to his time and became the president. So, as long as they know him, he is still alive and kicking. Elsewhere, Wyatt and his team reach the department store and inquire about the teenager. The cashier, suspecting that they are the kidnappers, denies having seen him and even threatens to call the police. 
However, when Lucy comes up with a story that the boy is her sick brother, he eventually gives in. The cashier reveals that JFK is heading to Palo Alto with a group of teenagers who are driving a red BMW. In the next scene, we see JFK on his way to Palo Alto with his new friends. He tries explaining to them that he was kidnapped by a bunch of mysterious folks. By a bunch of mysterious folks? But no one believes him. Just then, he experiences a sharp pain in his stomach, so Kelly and her group start driving towards the hospital. On the other hand, Wyatt and team are in hot pursuit of the BMW, but they just can't seem to track it. Wyatt talks to his tech guys and learns that the BMW changed course just a few miles from here. Lucy, being a history teacher, knows very well that JFK had a history of illness, which made him visit the hospital regularly. So, she hypothesizes that the teenagers are probably headed to a nearby hospital to get him checked. The tech guys then scan the area where the BMW changed course and find one hospital nearby. In the meantime, we see JFK at a hospital. He is astounded to see the state-of-the-art facility and the equipment present there. Turns out that modern medicine cured his stomach ache instantly. Meanwhile, Kelly approaches him and mentions that she is getting late for her home party and has to leave. She then proposes to call one of JFK's relatives to pick him up, but he stays silent. All of a sudden, he makes Kelly promise to not disclose what he is about to say, and when the latter obliges, he tells her everything. I was kidnapped in the year 1934 and teleported in the present world. I arrived here in a, a time machine. <laughs> However, Kelly deduces that he is hallucinating on medicine and doesn't believe a word that he is saying. Also, why are you talking like you're giving a speech? She then decides to take him home where he can get some help. At the same time, Wyatt and his lifeboat team also arrive at the same hospital and learn that JFK is being kept in room number 325. Wasting no time, they make their move. But when Wyatt is about to reach the said room, he notices that a female assassin from the Rittenhouse has also tracked JFK there. Alarmed, he takes out his gun and follows the lady inside room 3. 325, only to learn that JFK has already escaped. Nonetheless, the two get into a fight, and before the security arrives, the female assassin manages to escape. Wyatt is apprehended for his actions, but using his impressive skills, he gets out in less than five minutes. Elsewhere, Kelly leads JFK to her house, where a large party is going on in full swing. In a stressed state, JFK starts blabbering to everyone that he is a time traveler. That he is a time traveler? <laughs> no, I can't do that anymore. In a stressed state, JFK starts blabbering to everyone that he is a time traveler, so Kelly takes him away to her room. Ooh. There, she shows him some of her books, and the two start bonding over their shared interest in literature. Just then, Kelly searches teenage pictures of JFK on her iPad and compares the two. She is shocked to learn that the guy next to her is actually John F. Kennedy, and that he is a time traveler. She then shows him her iPad and reveals that he will be appointed as the 35th President of the United States in 1961, leaving him speechless. JFK asks if the iPad has information on his brother Joe, so Kelly searches Wikipedia for him. After reading his bio, she discloses that Joe left his college and enlisted in the Marines during the Second World War. He was deployed to France, but never came back, as the Nazis shot him dead. JFK is devastated to hear the news, but little does he know that that news is only the tip of the iceberg. Kelly brings up an article called The Kennedy Curse, which states that many members of the Kennedy family died very young. For instance, JFK's sister died in a plane crash, and his other brother perished in a vehicle collision. JFK also learns that he himself was assassinated in Dallas by a random guy in 1963. The revelation sends shivers down his spine, but Kelly encourages him that he can change his fate. Don't give him false hope, Kelly. On the other hand, Wyatt and his lifeboat team search the entire area but find no clues on JFK or the BMW. Just as they are about to lose hope, Lucy suddenly comes up with an idea. Since she knows that the group of teenagers were headed off to a party, there must be Instagram pictures of the event. And if there are such pictures, JFK must be in at least one of them. Hearing this, Wyatt quickly orders his tech team to run some face scans on Instagram. And surprisingly, after some effort, they find JFK. If that wasn't cable TV hacking at its finest I don't know what is. The tech guys then track the address from the picture and provide it to Wyatt. Back at the party, JFK has started drinking excessively after finding out that he and most of his family members are going to die soon. Kelly tries to cheer him up by showing him an American coin with his face on it, but it doesn't do anything. Just then, Wyatt comes through the door and requests JFK that they head home. The latter pretends to oblige, but at the last second, he pushes Wyatt and runs away to the main hall where all the teenagers are partying. Suddenly, the female assassin from earlier shows up and points her gun at JFK. She is about 
right to finish him off, but Wyatt arrives in the nick of time and shoots her first. With this, chaos ensues, and everyone starts running left, right, and center. The female assassin, who is now injured, takes advantage of the situation and flees the scene. After the commotion, JFK finally realizes that Wyatt and his friends are the good guys, who are trying to save him from the bad guys. So, he decides to trust them and do what they say. Before leaving, he bids Kelly an emotional farewell and thanks her for all that she has done for him. Kelly, who probably shouldn't have shown him that Wikipedia page, wishes him all the best and mentions that it has been a great honor to spend time with the greatest president of all time. She also promises to keep the whole incident a secret. Later, the lifeboat team arrives at their base with JFK and prepares the time machine to send him back to his original time, i.e. 1934. One of the tech guys named Martin approaches the soon-to-be president and warns him to not reveal any of this time travel stuff to anyone. Seriously, dude, please don't. Martin also warns him against going to that doomed Dallas rally of 1963, where he is going to get assassinated. You would think time travelers would know better than to mess with time travel like that. JFK obliges and soon gets seated inside the time machine. The very next second, he disappears and returns back to his time. After a while, the same tech guy, Martin, anxiously approaches his colleagues and asks what they know about John F. Kennedy. He believes that he has saved the president by informing him about his death event. However, to his horror, one of the colleagues says that JFK was indeed assassinated in 1963. Martin asserts that it is impossible, as he had strictly told JFK to stay away from Dallas, but the colleague reveals that he was actually assassinated in Austin. This means that no matter what they do, the timeline will always find a way to correct the anomalies caused by time travel. The show ends as all the heroes of the lifeboat team get ready for their next time travel adventure. Godspeed! Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.